All right, guys, we got Tom's truck in the shop today. Uh, not long ago, he was on the dyno, and the balancer ended up coming loose and broke the snout of the crank off. So he wanted to leave it here for us to fix it. Josh ended up putting a new crank in it, and um, we're going back in with it right now. So he's got 200% dual fuelers, 362 over 475. So uh, gonna get it at least first fire today and see how it does, and uh, probably go back on the dyno here in a little bit and go from there. All right, guys, um, we just got done eating lunch, and um, we're getting back to the pile now. And we're going to try and see if this thing will start up now. All right. Do you have oil pressure in there? Yeah. Perfect. Alright, now that Jerome has Tom's truck all wrapped up, we threw it on the dyno. Uh, we were able to squeeze 883 horsepower out of it. Uh, really hoping that we could get 900, but we just simply started not picking up power as we added fuel. So I'm assuming that he is out of air as 200% of dual fuelers. We've done 1200 horsepower. So he, he should have plenty of uh, fuel if he ever wants to upgrade his turbo. But should be a good running setup. Uh, we got tunes ranging from 883 horsepower all the way down to 514 horsepower. So with that being said, I'll get him off the dyno and send him on his way. We got Bubby Payne's truck back on the dyno. Uh, this truck had come to us with, he had just done a fresh start and was having some problems and he had done, redone the wiring harness. And there was a couple things that got messed up when the wire harness got redone. I, he had to depin the injector harness to get it, fit it through where he wanted it to. And I think one and two got flip flop. And that was why it was not running correctly. So we figured that out. Um, it had uh, the staging limiter had, was wired into the wrong pin. So there was a couple little things that we fixed with that. And then first pull out, it chucked the freeze plugs out of the one CP3, which was kind of a freak deal. We're not sure why it caused why it did that. Um, so we sent the uh, DDP sent us a new pump. It's got two DDP 12 mils. It's got DDP 400% overs. And then we're suspecting maybe there was a piece, piece of contamination that maybe got in one of the injectors because since then it had not run right. So we just got the injectors back from DDP. It's finally running right the way it's supposed to. So now we're going to run the thing through the spaces on the dyno and see what kind of power we can make today. We got 1,724 horsepower on fuel only out of this thing. That's maxing out the uh, pumps at 5,500 RPM. These are two 12 mil pumps and they hold rail great until 5,000, but at 1,400 microseconds, they just cannot quite keep up, which that is a ton of fuel. It's almost 600 milligrams of fuel, um, but we pushed it as hard as we could and 1,724 was the fuel only number. Uh, so then we're turned three kits of nitrous on and that did 2,076 uh, horsepower and a little over 2,000 foot-pounds of torque. We ran that up to like 5,800 RPM. 
With a dyno like this, it is hard to make that much power in such a short window, and that's why you see the torque number being so low. If we could actually load this up down low and it not spin the tire, we could make a huge torque number. Uh, everybody always asks why torque is so low. I mean, 2,000 foot-pounds of torque is not that low, but it is low in comparison for diesel, but that's mostly because we're bringing the nitrous on at 3,200 RPM when we're at 30 pounds of boost, and it takes most of the run to get that to 100 pounds of boost to get to peak power. Uh, but 2,076 is where we're going to call it a day. Uh, safe to say Bubby's got himself a hot rod. He can take this thing out and go drag racing, uh, sled pulling. Should be ready for some action. So look for him out on a track near you, and hopefully he can enjoy this little regular cab short bed.